Well, hello everybody, this is uh, the boss to meet the technical committee and well, uh, the, uh, the, the technical committee is formed uh, currently of eight people, four of us are present here, uh, well, uh, most, I, I guess most of uh, you know uh, 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 all of us, but this, who is Mr. David Bremner? Tolev uh, Foghin. Hello. Philip Hans. Some people that we do re really care about but are not here to say hello, which are Marga Manterola, Simon, uh, Simon McVitie, Didier Rabu, Nico Tini, they cannot be here at the DevConf, and I am Bunar Wolf. And uh, the technical committee has had many, many other members in the past. Uh, well, uh, we thank them all and the uh, uh, I mean, there have been, we, we will talk a bit about the interesting things uh, that have happened. So, well, some may be wondering, in, in fact, my main motivation for calling for this session and for, uh, well, inviting my colleagues here is, uh, is that uh, we, we want people to get involved, to know what the technical committee is, and, uh, well, maybe to join us at some point in the future. Uh, so. Uh, the technical committee is outlined by, uh, by, uh, by the uh, Constitution. Uh, section 6 of the Constitution defines what the technical committee is and can and cannot do. Basically, the technical committee can decide on any matter of technical policy, decide on any te technical matter where developers' jurisdictions overlap, make a decision when asked to do so, uh, tie-breaking, overrule a developer, so that means uh, if, if a developer is doing something we can tell them that's not the right thing to do, that's uh, a last resort measure, and just to offer advice. If you want to please uh, say, say anything I'm skipping, just interrupt me. Now the technical committee is also bounded by, by the constitution, uh, uh, the discussion has to be public so, of course, uh, like, uh, like many other uh, Debian teams, we do have uh, private uh, channels, but everything that uh, we do must be supported in, in public discussions and decision making. We, uh, the technical committee doesn't go into details when outlining a solution, no detailed design work. And the technical committee is seen as a last resort. So, if something doesn't work out between people, between developers, uh, the, uh, a technical committee can get involved. Yep. We are asked to break the ties among the available options and uh, uh, after, after alternative uh, options have been tried and failed. So we can offer advice to you, to any well, developer who asks uh, that and uh, that's precisely what, what, what we're currently doing with our, well, I will get to the two bugs we are currently working on. So, the technical committee is a self-nominated uh, board, uh, well, a group, that is the technical committee asks the DPL to add uh, members to it. It's DPL appointed, it's last resort, and it's a body for conflict resolution and advice providing. So, what do we do? What have we done in this uh, last year? Well, most of our, our productivity has been uh, adding, uh, adding members and uh, deciding who is the, the, the chair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do that via box in the web tracker. Uh, in, the, in the past year, we have had uh, two technical decisions. Uh, so. Both decisions are repealing older decisions by the, the technical committee because, well, the reality uh, on, uh, in different parts of the project has shifted. So, for example, uh, this, this first one, the, there was a very long thread, some of you will remember, about whether Node could be no, named Node or had to be Node.js because there was another thing called Node. Well, the technical committee had decided a long time ago that the JavaScript Node had to be called Node.js. But now that the other package called Node uh, is gone, uh, the, we, uh, we repealed that uh, past decision. 
most of the things, well, uh, the, the, the committee is providing uh, points of view, uh, say qualified points of view. So in this last year, we, we closed four books without a formal resolution. It was not needed, uh, a consensus was found and accepted by the developers. So we have these four books. Again, I'm not getting into details. Currently, we have two open books we will be discussing. Both were opened within the last two weeks. And uh, uh, well, they are regarding uh, the policy sprint that uh, well, is being uh, spearheaded by uh, Sean Whitton, who reg regrettably has uh, other activity at this same uh, time. But well, uh, we're discussing whether vendor-specific patch series should be permitted in the archive, and uh, what should happen when maintainer scripts fail to restart a service during package installation or removal. Okay, uh, well, I'm missing there because I'm at the very bottom, but uh, um, uh, the technical committee has, uh, has a limit, uh, a time limit of uh, three and a half years for uh, permanence in, uh, in it. So, well, uh, uh, Simon and me were the last ones to join. Our term will expire at the end of uh, 2021. And, well, from the rest uh, of us, uh, well, uh, Tolef is uh, currently the eldest one here. Uh, he's uh, uh, about to, uh, to leave the committee at the end of this year, uh, as well as uh, Didier, who's our past uh, chair. The, the, the rules for it are a bit uh, strange, but well, anyway. So every year we want to get around one or two new members. It's not uh, that we need it. The, the, the Constitution states that the committee can operate with between four and eight people. We are currently eight, so, uh, but uh, we, we want to get new people to enlist to work with us, to volunteer. Work is not that contentious or that hard. We did have a, well, uh, before I joined, uh, they, they did have a really, really hard time designing the NEAT system. You, we don't want to go over it again. It's a really, really nice way to, to stress test the bug tracking system. It's probably the largest bug in the, in yep. the entire BTS. It's a rather large bug. Yeah. So, uh, well, even though the name is technical committee, the work is mostly social. And it's about solving disagreements. As much of the things we're currently discussing at this DevConf, uh, we are talking broadly about uh, technical things, but more detailedly about how to solve social issues. Listening to people, sometimes taking some decisions. It's mostly a political thing. And uh, well, we're looking for people with these qualities, right? So people with empathy, technical agility, mentorship, responsiveness, social sensitivity, and who are cool-headed, even in a world weather like we're having now. We need more diversity. That's uh, that's true. That's a fact. Uh, we, I, I'm, I am very happy. I guess you you uh, will join the feeling of this that our uh, our current chair is Marga which well, brings, brings some diversity in, uh, in, into a well, mostly male, mostly everything uh, project. But we need more diversity. We want different people uh, say we don't have uh, anybody from this part of the world or things like that. We're looking for people uh, to nominate themselves. So either yourself or somebody else, if you think about somebody who could make a good committee member, please nom nominate them. Well, we're friendly. We are uh, available. We want to hear you. We're just people, developers, just like you. And of course, we want to improve processes. And well, that, that's, that's it for the presentation. Now I'm joining the rest of the group for, for your questions. Please have questions. Do you want this one?
Have you have you ever gone anywhere with the roadmap uh, initiative? I thought we decided that we shouldn't be in the roadmap initiative, didn't we? Yeah, that's my yeah. I think our, our, our opinion was that if we wanted to be involved in the roadmap initiative, we'd do it as individuals, not as a commit, not as a committee. Okay. Has anybody else gone anywhere with the roadmap? I don't know. Okay, that's great. Personally, uh, that strikes me as a bit too top-down, but you know, everybody can have their own opinion. Uh, that's why I'm not involved with the roadmap. So maybe, why, why are you here? Why are you in this session? What interests you to learn from the technical committee? Please, people. I think the bank is the cash. So, uh, since you don't ask any questions, I'm going to ask questions of the audience. Um, what are the barriers for you to bring things to the technical committee? Everything is great for you. You have no conflicts, no differences of opinion. That's great, if it's so, and. Please say so, so that the world knows everything is great in Debian. Um, otherwise, uh, I'd like to know, because there's not too many things coming to us, which, you know, is okay, I'm lazy, so. And uh, also, I just made a terrible bug in my C code, which I could work on instead. Um, but, uh, so please, tell me, uh, even if it's only hypothetical for you, so what might prevent you from bringing things to the technical committee. Am I supposed to answer for everyone or? <laughs> OK, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, in my um, personal uh, opinion, I, I think the um, um, there's a history of having the project go to the technical committee and either uh, not finding a resolution in a reasonable amount of time or um, like the universe exploding and, uh, and so I think a lot of people have, are scared of uh, putting things forward to the technical committee. Um, I think this has changed uh, with like the, for instance, the term limits uh, and everything. So there's like a lot of uh, new blood coming in regularly. But yeah, I don't know if, uh, like we have a lot of inertia in uh, the way we see things in the project. So maybe it will change with time, I hope. I think we're all pretty committed to dealing with issues quickly if we can, if there's any way of doing that. So uh, if, it's, if, you, if you imagine that it's going to be nine months of aggravation or silence, uh, th that probably won't happen. Uh, we might say, uh, I have a tendency to say to people that I don't think the bug justifies going to the technical committee, because I think that can quite often be said very quickly indeed and still leaving an opening for them to come back and say no really. Because there are some bugs which will clearly either lay dormant forever or get closed and you might as well close them straight away. That's the only reason I do it. If, if people uh, think I'm wrong, then please just uh, try again. <coughs> so you shouldn't, I've done that a few times recently. Uh, don't take that as we're just trying to throw them away. But some bugs uh, haven't been ready for the technical committee when they were submitted. Uh, 
I, I think one of the things that people don't use enough is the advice capacity of the technical committee. Uh, we always use the technical committee as like the supreme court of the Debian project. Um, and yeah, I, I think the like constitutional uh, requirements that people go forward to ask the committee for advice instead of the committee just coming from the top and saying, hey, we think that maybe you should do things like it, like that, uh, could be relaxed a bit. Uh, I don't know if uh, it's a sensible thing to do. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Well, yeah, I, I, I think. Uh, uh, since I joined, we have had a quite low activity. In, in fact, uh, at, at least three monthly meetings have been cancelled because, because we didn't have any box open, which is good. Which is good, a bit boring, but uh, it's good. Uh, but say uh, we, we have had, and I think it's a good resolution after all, uh, one bug asking us to review the, uh, whether we, it was right to do the change of the init system. Of course, uh, that's asking the technical committee for a resolution. Our resolution is, no, that's not our job. So, but but I, I think it's okay to just come to, the, to, to this body and ask, well, whatever irks you with the project. Probably we will, I mean, look into it if, if it's within what we have to do. Probably we will not, but... Um, and we're, we're currently answering to questions regarding policy. Well, in, in the same way, uh, the policy maintainers say, hey, what's your opinion on this? So they can have a backing to, to do a policy change. They actually haven't asked for, for advice. They've delegated the decision to us, which is slightly different. You're both correct. Um, there's two bugs, and one of you is correct about each of them. OK. <laughs> So um, I think one thing uh, that I hope can change is that people uh, feel like having a bug forwarded to the technical committee, if you're the maintainer and somebody disagrees with you and forwards a bug to the technical committee, people see that as a very negative thing. And um, I think we should think about why there certainly are aspects that are negative and we should try and change those. Um, and we should also make sure that the perception isn't worse than the reality. So, um, because it's a bit unfortunate if it's a way to get people to orphan their packages by filing bugs with the technical committee, right? That, that's, the system's not working well at that point, uh, collectively, I mean, uh, part of it you know, is the way that things have happened, as Nicola mentioned in the past, but, um, and part of it is, you know, interpersonal things in the project are always a bit tricky, right? But uh, I don't know if there's things that we can do as a committee. I th we talked about being timely, um, and maybe talking to people early in the process. I mean, we've had various sort of informal consultations about conflict issues, um, which is sort of on the edge of our formal role, but I think it's helpful. Uh, and if we are really, you know, have to get into lawyering about it, we can say we're doing it as individual developers, right? I mean, but, uh, I, I mean, conflicts don't get easier to solve as they, develop, right? People's positions become hardened and they become angrier and uh, less rational. I know I do. So, ah, a question. Whew, anything to shut me up. <laughs> no, in fact not, David. You mentioned that uh, people might often packages as a result of, of a decision of the, of the TC. So, uh, has this happened? And in general, are you as a TC following up after your decision? What happens after a decision has been taken by you and published? How this, how this continues and what the, the consequences are of the decision that, that you have published? So, so what I said actually, so we'll come to your question in a sec, but to clarify, 
people orphan uh, their packages sometimes uh, because not because of a decision the technical committee makes, but because someone asked the technical committee to make a decision. And they just find the process sufficiently daunting. So uh, it's hard to make a decision that will make them happy in, in, in that situation. But I guess maybe somebody else wants to answer the, your real question, which was, do we follow up? And, or maybe not. So <laughs> I, I, I mean, we do, right? I, I mean, uh, and, but it is also, uh, in a sense, up to the project as a whole to say, OK. Or I mean, usually, if you bring something to the technical committee, and there's two parties, and one of them gets their way. Typically, right? I mean, oversimplistically, but... And that one is going to uh, be interested in whether this decision is implemented or not, and can bring the lack of implementation to the, to the attention of the committee if it doesn't happen. So I, th I think there's sort of a built-in I don't know, maybe other people, maybe there are subtleties that I'm missing here, but of all the things that we might be screwing up, I think that that's probably not one of them. I, I haven't really seen a big need for it, like in a formal formal way, because partially because of that, and partially because if the TC decides something, then maintainers don't actually go around undermining that by failing to implement stuff. Um, I think if they did, then we would have other problems. Um, so, yeah. I, I normally get interested in the the actual pro problem while we're looking into it, and so I quite often carry on looking at it afterwards. So, in a very informal way, I sort of follow up, but you know, I, I haven't made a point of it. So, if decisions are where uh, about things that I'm really not interested in, then I probably wouldn't notice if they became toxic afterwards. I don't know. I I think uh, well I am happy, and uh, that's uh, one of the points I pointed out in the presentation, which I must say it's basically a copy from what did there presented last year. Uh, I am happy that uh, most of the things that have been decided were not a formal decision, but uh, wa was helping reach consensus. So if both parties in an arg uh, argument say, OK, this is no longer a problem because we have spoken it over, well, we don't have to follow through because it's done. I have something uh, from IRC. Uh, Helmut uh, has made a comment about why people are reluctant to uh, actually put things forwards to the committee. Um, he's saying that he's experienced twice that he has put an issue forward to the committee and by the time it was resolved, uh, the issue was obsolete. And not really How long ago was that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, 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 know, I, I know that was a problem or at, at least a perception problem, I don't know, with the committee long time ago. I think it was less than a year ago, but okay. um, I don't recall exactly. I think we, it's, we will get back to you with the answer. I, I think it's a fair comment. Um, it will always be something we need to watch to make sure that the committee is, or to to try to make the committee as responsive as possible. I mean, as you know, everything in Debian happens according to people fitting it around all their various responsibilities. Um, but generally, people who join the committee uh, join it knowing that for some periods of time they will have to try to really make an effort to be responsive to committee stuff. So Helmut has followed up, it was more than one year ago, so maybe it got better? Maybe. I mean, I, I think it's, uh, look, we're part of Debian, right? So we run on Debian time just like the rest of the project. And, uh, but it, it's also true that it's a time sensitive uh, thing. So. I think if you report uh, an issue that's caused by someone doing something just as we go into one of the harder freeze freezes just before a release, then the technical committee in the past has certainly not been responsive enough to 
do something useful before the release happened. So uh, I guess we just need to notice that that's exactly what's going. If that happens again, we'll have to make some sort of precipitate, we've only got two days to decide this type decision. It, it's better to make a decision than now than to make a, the right decision later and just deal with it straight away because there's certainly been more than one issue in the past where that situation has occurred and just by, you know, someone's effectively won their case by default because there wasn't time to deal with it. So, yeah. It's, it's not crazy for submitters to uh, explain the time aspects of their request when they make it also. Help us understand what the issues are. Yeah, that's quite often people assume that we're going to instantly see their side of the argument and that there's no need to explain it really. And if you do that, then we all go, hmm, what is this thing that they're talking about? And it takes ages. So if you have a, a good argument, set it out and possibly point out the other side of the argument a bit as well and make sure that there's clarity about what the issue really is. And then that is an introduction to the other side to make a decent argument back. If it's just this person's rubbish and uh, you need to tell them to stop doing that, it's much more difficult to do anything useful in a short time. Um, Helwood has been saying that he agrees with Gunnar, so that what you said made, makes a lot of sense. Um, I have another question from IOC, um, which is about one of the cases that just arrived uh, in your inbox. Uh, what do you think about uh, allowing vendor-specific patch series in a source package? I think I've made my position pretty clear that I think it's a really bad idea to allow that in Debian. I haven't completely formed a, an opinion yet, but I'm leaning towards that I don't see a good argument in favor uh, of these patch series. I mean, I, or rather, I haven't found the arguments presented so far to be convincing. Uh, my, uh, my initial reaction to it was, that seems like a great place to hide malware. Uh, and uh, it would need a pretty strong argument to keep them given that because I hadn't really noticed them previous to this. So someone needs to come up with that argument, I suppose. I'm in line with the positions they presented. And uh, well, I, I should say nobody has uh, spoken for, uh, for the, uh, the, the vendor specific patch series so far, besides the person that, that brought up the, the, the topic. So I mean, I cannot uh, state, uh, I, I cannot foresee what we will end up deciding, but I don't see this will be a very contentious argument. We're basically waiting for other people to talk, and uh, I guess that within, within, within this, uh, say, one month period we have between uh, uh, IRC meetings, I hope the, it will be closed. Was the question also about the other case, or was he was there only a question about the... Uh, no, only that case, yeah. as far as I can tell, at least. I'm really interested in feedback from developers in general on the init scripts thing, because scripts thing, that seems quite subtle to me. Um, so if you know a lot about init scripts, please read this bug and uh, it, educate me. For, for those who haven't read the, the bug, it's basically should, what, what should maintainer scripts do when restarting a daemon fails? Should they fail or should they continue? I mean, there, yeah, there, there's no clear position, but, but we do have the problem of, uh, as, the, as there is no clear answer, we have uh, unpredictable <laughs> outcomes. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm now asking about a question. I, I just want to ask about how, how do you make uh, a consensus uh, because the, uh, I think the most violent uh, argument I remember now is this, the upstar and the systemd <laughs> argument and uh, it ends up that uh, we have a 
bad enough to evolve to which one is the best. Uh, maybe not the best, but which one has the most evolved. And uh, 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 so, so in in general, it, uh, how how do you discuss that? And make it says no more cast all of you in the committee or agree on someone, uh, something, uh, or uh, for the system, the it's a it's a kind of a really common cast that uh, that we have to vote to make the decision that there's uh, no room for discussion. I'm yielding the microphone because I, I wasn't part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't there either. I, I did watch quite a lot of the discussion. I think mostly people submitted quite detailed descriptions of why they thought what they thought and tried to persuade one another. And in that particular instance, people were not persuaded, so it came down to a vote. But the way we more often do things is that we don't normally have to go into so much detail because it's easier to come, you know, if everybody agrees at the start, you don't even, we don't even vote normally, or we, we do a... We, we vote by because we have to. Uh, yeah, I, I think there have been instances where we don't, we haven't voted. Yeah, we're, Because we're, it was completely obvious that everybody agreed with doing a particular thing. But, so, if there's some sort of split, then people start justifying their positions and the more that happens, sometimes people change their opinions and then the, the disagreement evaporates. Yeah, in, in general, you try to, to make the disagreement disappear by understanding why the other person holds their position. And, and in some cases, it's generally because you have, like, the world looks different from different places, but quite often it's just because, you know, it, it's fairly easy to align on, on a world view, which is this is the set of trade-offs and this makes more sense to do it that way than that way. I was thinking, well, of course people will, will, will bring this, uh, this topic of the system, the decision, and will probably keep bringing it up uh, in future uh, uh, years, but the thing is, I'm, I'm thinking of it as something more broad. I mean, no, I don't remember so, such a discussion or backlash when Red Hat took the same decision or when, well, many other distributions did. May, uh, maybe what happens is that we do have an open decision process. People, uh, everybody wants to be part of such a relevant decision that changes the, the Linux uh, landscape for good. But the thing is, uh, I mean, the same decision was taken in so many places that, uh, say, we, we were recently asked uh, whether we should review that. Of course, we unanimously said, no, we don't want to review that. But uh, I, I think hundreds of other distributions are, are okay with the, with the path taken. I think the uh, the premise for the uh, asking us to review it was completely broken. Is is the reason why, when when there was a disagreement in the technical committee, it was between whether that we should switch to upstart or to systemd. Uh, it wasn't whether we should stay with sys via nit, or I mean, openrd was uh, a long third. So. At this point, I think it's, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, I think it's pretty clear that Upstart wasn't going to be a great choice because where's Upstart? It, it got, well, I mean, it got killed off by, by Upstream, basically, when we decided to switch to... Yeah, the, but also, uh, you know, Upstart's had severe problems for quite a time and... Uh, the original developer. Yeah, we don't have to talk about yeah, this. Yeah, we don't have to. <laughs> okay, we don't. But but that, that's the reason why it's a, the question was wrong when it was presented to us again because the question was asking it as if as if going back to sys via init was an option and it was wasn't an option even then that wasn't on the table so it was between two choices one of which isn't there anymore. So well, open RC was was way behind though wasn't it really? Are, really. are, are there any more questions? 
<laughs> so I, I shouldn't have started that. It's okay. It's system D, whatever, blah de blah. I think the real problem actually is that people think that they are, you know, that Debian is theirs. Every, everybody in Debian thinks that Debian is theirs. So that's why people didn't complain in Red Hat because Red Hat's just, you know, like milk or something. It's something they buy. And that's not, not a theirs. problem. That's great. No, that's really good. But that's why people get upset. You know, you don't get upset about the person that manufactures your tires changing the ingredients or something. Uh, do you still want opinions in the peanut gallery on what should happen when, when main scripts fail to be set of service? Yes. I do. Okay. Um, I guess, like, so broadly, like, obviously, like, the reason that this is in front of the committee and the reason that, you know, nobody can really decide what, which way to go is because, like, it is sort of implementation specific, like, rather, it is going to be deployment specific. Like, there's some cases where you absolutely do care and you want it to fail, and that's going to be something you're going to notice and then be able to take action on. In other cases, you could, could, could you know, give two shits. But um, I, I think that said, for the default, I, I suspect the answer should be it should cause a failure. Um, just thinking from the context of uh, I am setting something up in CI, I'm setting something up via like Chef or whatever, and I say install this package and expect it to be configured once Chef runs successfully. Um, maybe you say I should add a, like a, a check that af after we install this package, we you know, then do some health check to make sure it was both installed and correctly configured. But I, I think it would be mm, less surprising if like that install failed because the ended result of the service running didn't occur. Uh, and then this sort of goes back to Debian's uh, ethos of like, you know, on by default. If you install something, it should be running. Um, and we, we, of course, we, we, that's not appropriate for every deployment. So we already provide mechanisms for you to say, in, when installing packages, don't start the service. But and I think that in the same way, it would be reasonable to offer a tunable. But I, I think the default should be to fail, personally. Does that make sense? It was a cogent opinion. Yeah, it made sense. <laughs> I, I'm not. Yeah, so without saying, yes, we agree. Let's decide it Luke's way. But uh, no, thanks for the, the cogently expressed position. Anybody else have similar differing opinions? We still have 10 minutes. So. Check IRC. <laughs> nope. It's not a, that we have to squeeze every last minute of the of the session. If there's no more questions, well, there's perfectly good time to have some more coffee. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks to everyone for coming, and uh, also to people who are watching the stream and on IRC. And hi, Helmut. <laughs> And we're looking forward to your nominations for the tech committee, of course. Yes. Please think about it. Yep. We are sh uh, short on candidates. We want you or we want you to nominate your friends. <laughs> or enemies. <laughs> no, really, nominating your friends is great because if, you've got, if you're in some little nook of Debian where most people have never heard of what you do even and you know that there's one person that is really good at solving arguments between the rest of you guys, then nominate them because that's the sort of person we want and they will uh, uh, broaden the, the diversity of the, uh, the committee probably because they're not from the usual suspects of people that keep on turning up to DevConf and, and all that. So if you're doing some strange little bit of uh, something which nobody's ever heard of and there's some very wise person that you can point at, then nominate them. In, in terms of actually how much time it takes, it's not very much. We say that uh, we ask people to reserve like an hour a week. In practice, I find it, it's less. Mm -hmm. So it's in terms of, of actual workload, it's not that much. Okay, I suggest everybody leaves now. <laughs> Bye. Bye.